Control and Prevention. I'm excited to share with you today the release of CDC guidelines for the use of a new regimen for the treatment of persons with latent tuberculosis infection. Preventing tuberculosis disease by treating those with latent infection is a cornerstone of the U.S. strategy for TB elimination. This new regimen, referred to as a 12-dose regimen for treatment of latent tuberculosis infection, is a combination of isoniazid and rifapentine given once weekly and 12 doses under directly observed therapy. This regimen is one of the biggest breakthroughs in treatment for latent tuberculosis infections since the 1960s, as it reduces treatment from 270 daily doses over nine months to 12 once-weekly doses given over three months. A recent large randomized controlled trial found the 12-dose regimen to be as effective for preventing tuberculosis as other regimens. The new regimen is also more likely to be completed than the current U.S. standard regimen for nine months of isoniazid daily without directly observed therapy. It's important to realize that this new regimen does not replace other recommended options for treatment of persons with latent tuberculosis infection. This regimen is recommended as an equal alternative for otherwise healthy persons 12 years of age and older who have latent tuberculosis infection and factors that are predictive of progressing to tuberculosis disease, such as recent exposure to a person with infectious TB disease or who have a tuberculin skin test conversion or a positive blood test for tuberculosis. HIV-infected persons who are otherwise healthy and not taking antiretroviral medicines are included in this category. The regimen can also be considered for other groups when it offers practical advantages, such as completion within a limited time frame. This regimen is not recommended for children younger than two years of age, HIV-infected persons taking antiretroviral therapy, pregnant women, or women who expect to become pregnant during treatment, and people who have latent tuberculosis infection with presumed isoniazid or rifapentine resistance. These persons should be treated with other available regimens for latent tuberculosis infection. The choice between the 12-dose regimen and other approved latent tuberculosis infection treatment regimens depends on several factors, including the feasibility of providing directly observed therapy, resources for drug procurement, program operations, including patient monitoring, expectance of treatment completion while considering the medical and the social circumstances of the patient, and the preferences of the patient and the prescribing physician. Directly observed therapy is recommended for this 12-dose regimen. Outreach workers should be trained on potential medication side effects and how to educate patients about this new regimen. Persons using the 12-dose regimen should undergo monthly clinical monitoring, including inquiries about side effects and a physical assessment for signs of adverse effects. Although blood tests are not recommended for everyone, baseline and subsequent tests should be done for certain groups. While the 12-dose regimen was well tolerated in three reported treatment trials, severe adverse events which is defined as effects requiring hospital admission or fatalities should be reported to the Federal Drug Administration, MedWatch, and local and state health departments immediately for inclusion in CDC's surveillance system for adverse effects associated with treatment for latent tuberculosis infection. More information about latent TB infection, the available treatment options, and educational materials for healthcare professionals is available at www.cdc.gov forward slash 